As we find ourselves in June, a month traditionally full to the brim with pride, we turn to historic queer venues in the neighborhoods of the UK, admiring how they brought together communities and created a legacy for the British LGBTQ community that is present till this very day. Starting at Britain's oldest gay pub, the Royal Vauxhall Tavern has been hosting LGBTQ plus performers and customers since the 1940s. It is where Freddie Mercury once scandalously smuggled Princess Diana inside male drag. In 2015, it was saved from development and given a grade two listing in a victory for activists and supporters, including Sir Ian McKellen. The tavern's famous kidney-shaped bar, its curved Victorian front, and its position in queer nightlife as a haven for drag and alternative performance is now secured until the end of time. What do cars, queer folk, and Birmingham have in common? The sidewalk, of course. Originally a car showroom in the 1930s, the premises were transformed into a private members only bar in 1996. It intentionally took advantage of the wide windows all around, typical of showrooms, to open up the views of the inside to the street. This bold gesture was the first of the sort in the West Midlands, as it was a protest responding to attitudes of the period. Nowadays, it lives on as a favored meeting place by day and a great place for LGBTQ plus revelers at night. If you've ever wondered what Manchester's gay village was like before the 90s, take a look at the history of the new union. Formerly a pub where gays and lesbians would meet, it probably dates as far back as the 19th century. During World War II, it hosted drag nights, often entertaining American soldiers stationed nearby and attracting a sizable LGBTQ plus clientele while doing so. Today, the bee cladded Victorian style venue is a snazzy show bar in a Georgian era street with world renowned drag performances and awesome music. Instagram at the Butch Gardener. Today I'm going to give you a green tip. Green tomato plants, it's a real meditative practice that's really grounding. From the moment you plant the seed to when the seedlings come up and then you tie them and stake them like this, pinch them out and then pick the delicious fruit and make a chutney too. There's a taste of the tomato there for you all year round. So at this time of year there's been a lot of growth in the plant, hopefully under this nice hot sun. And we're going to need to stake this plant in order to keep it strong, keep it secure so it can shoot up and then it can safely hold all of those beautiful tomatoes in a few weeks, a month's time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a cane and we're going to push it down into the ground, close enough to the plant that it's going to support it, but not so close that we're going to damage the roots. So we're about here, about that far away is good. And we're going to push it right in so it's nice and secure. You don't want it blowing over. And I'm gonna take some twine, and we're gonna cut some even pieces here, like this. And we're gonna go evenly spacing along the stem of the plant. We're gonna tie it to the cane. Now they always say, tie the cane to the plant, not the plant to the cane. So try not to yank it around too much as you do it.
around the age of nine. Um, I was living in Mexico and I really wanted to recreate my own Hilton brand. So I was designing hotel layouts on imaginary islands. Concrete because I'm obsessed with brutalism. Photoshop. I've always tried to be as authentically myself, whether in practice or at uni. Either the Shard or the Dongling Moon Design Plaza in Seoul by Saha Hadid. The unnecessarily long time it takes to qualify. Bergheim in Berlin. Valentina or Bibni Bomboulash. to do as much solo travelling and exploring as possible. Probably that I didn't do a study year abroad. Qualifying with a distinction in my masters during the pandemic. So my masters project was a BDSM club in the heart of Oxford, that repurposed four of the city's most iconic buildings, connected them with a giant exoskeleton and it was all about exploring fetish, queerness. YouTube star Eugene Lee Young came out as gay in this deeply personal video that he wrote, directed and choreographed. Through contemporary dance, Young takes us through the different stages of self-discovery with his sexuality. Watch how the set beautifully morphs from one scene to another, enhanced by use of specific colours, which evokes both the pain and celebration that came with Young's emotional journey. The I'm Gay video also served as a fundraiser for The Trevor Project, a non-profit organisation that aims to prevent suicide among LGBTQ plus youth.